Hi, my name is Ross McRae and I'm the Director of Marketing for Brumby Aircraft Australia and I'd like to talk about LSAs in a training environment. You know, it's probably safe to say that some high activity general aviation flying schools are a little concerned about introducing LSAs into their fleet and that's possibly because LSAs don't seem to have a good track record of being able to stand up to the sort of punishment that some students can actually dish out, especially in a GA school. So the alternative to purchasing a modern LSA is to stick with the good old Cessna 150s and 152s or the Tomahawks, maybe even the Skipper. The problem is that these 25 to 40 year old aeroplanes simply don't perform on a number of levels like a modern LSA will. As an instructor, you know the performance of your current GA trainers, but just compare their performance to say a high or a low wing Brumby LSA for instance. The Brumbies will climb at between 900 and 1000 feet per minute. They'll cruise at almost 110 knots. They'll take off and land in 300 metres or so. But they'll burn only 18 litres an hour with a 100 horsepower Rotax engine. Now compare that sort of economy to the two or four place tr GA trainers. The bottom line is that you simply can't get that level of performance or economy from a traditional GA training aircraft. Now, speaking of economy for a second, let's say you want to buy a new Cessna 172 as a trainer. But the 172 has a capital cost of at least twice that of the Brumby 600 Evolution. When training in the circuit, the 172 will pretty much run full rich all the time, so it will burn at least twice as much fuel as the Evolution. And the cost of an engine overhaul on a Rotax 912 is much less than half of that, of, say, the Cessna's Lycoming engine. Now all of those expenses at the end of the day really start to add up, making flight training more expensive for the school and therefore ultimately more expensive for the student. But as you know, the good bit about LSA training for students is that if they train on an LSA initially, their training costs are lower. Um, and if they do want to go on to heavier GA or commercial aircraft, the LSA flying time can be counted toward their PPL. But having said all that, I certainly don't want to knock the two seat Cessnas or Pipers because they have done and they continue to do a fantastic job for training schools. But the reality is that a modern high powered LSA really will give you performance closer to a 172 at half the fuel burn and half the capital cost. Okay, so what's wrong with LSAs for general aviation training schools? Well, firstly, as I already mentioned, training schools have found that the LSA can't seem to take the punishment constantly meted out. Um, and that's particularly so in a busy training school. Secondly, CFIs and instructors are concerned that LSAs don't have the same feel in the air as their GA equivalents. And thirdly, because LSAs have a reputation of not really being able to handle student abuse, LSA maintenance costs have been a good deal higher. Okay, so let's deal with the second point first. Now, LSAs are unashamedly lighter to fly than the GA equivalents. However, some CFIs reckon that LSA trained students in some respects actually end up as better pilots than their general aviation cousins. Turning now to the uh, points one and three, both of these points really relate to the same general issue. And that issue refers to the inherent strength of the aircraft itself. And this is where we think the Brumbies differ from your average normal LSA. Both the high and the low wing Brumby have been designed from the ground up as a light general aviation aircraft rather than an LSA. This means that the Brumbies are both uh, designed and built stronger than most light sport aircraft. So simply put, we believe that the Brumby is more tolerant of the harder life it will receive in a training school than the vast majority of overseas produced LSAs. But there's also one more really important point to add here, and that is because you're dealing with an Australian manufacturer, you have a well-qualified team of local support people who can help you with any problems. And in the event that you do have a, say, a mishap, you also have the peace of mind of knowing that the spare parts are only days away, not months away, as maybe is the case is, uh, with some imported uh, LSA aircraft. Now, I don't want to leave you with the uh, impression that the Brumby is built to be abused, because it's not. Instructors need to instill in students 
that they have to have a lighter touch on the controls and maybe, maybe more finesse in their flying than they've um, been used to with the 152s and the Tomahawks, which are basically uh, slightly heavier aircraft. Okay, so now we've discussed the, final as the financial aspects uh, and benefits of the LSA. Let's go into the factory and talk about the technical reasons why the Brumby is such a strong aeroplane. Okay, so here we are in the factory. The Brumby Low Wing is manufactured from aircraft grade aluminium alloy construction with the forward cockpit section reinforced with an SAE 4130 chrome moly vanadium tubular construction. Now this gives you inherent airframe strength and this construction also greatly enhances occupant protection. The entire internal structure is solid riveted for optimum strength. The outer skins are a combination of solid and blind rivets. Incorporated in the fuselage is the wing centre section. This consists of a very strong main spar with four 6mm thick 2024 T3 spar caps and 10 ribs joining the forward and the rear spar. The centre ribs form the base of the seats and these support the seat tracks. Now this allows for the forward and aft adjustment of the seats. The forward sliding canopy frame is made of a 4130 tubular structure and this, combined with the rear canopy fixed support, supplies good rollover protection in the case of a mishap. The high wing 610 Evolution has a very similar tubular construction for good pilot protection. The instrument panel is fitted with a substantial crash pad for increased pilot head protection in the case of a mishap. The pilot is also restrained with a four point full safety harness and that's similar to the ones used on aerobatic aircraft. Both the high and the low wing Brumbies have a tricycle undercarriage consisting of two spring steel main legs and each of these are attached to the fuselage with three 13 mm high tensile bolts. Now this gives not only high strength but a high fatigue life as well. The nose gear is an air over oil oleo nose strut as is found in most light commercial aircraft. Incorporated with the rudder pedals is the nose wheel steering and independent tow brakes for both the pilot and the passenger. The rear fuselage is an aluminium monocoque construction of deep design and this gives a strong rigid fuselage supporting the empennage. Main wing struts are 6061 T6 aluminium extrusions and these are a similar size to the Cessna 182. Now the tail plane is of a conventional design and is attached to two rear bulkheads using 2024 aluminium supports. The rudder has proven in both the high and the low wing Brumbies to be very powerful and effective, including at low speed. And this fact has been demonstrated in the spin testing by a professional consultant test pilot. The aircraft recovers from a spin within one turn as per the ASTM specifications. Before we certify the aeroplane, it has undergone a matrix of 56 individual spin tests consisting of 18 individual one-turn spins at the forward, middle and aft C of G locations. So that's just some of the technical stuff out of the way. But it's important because that attention to technical detail makes the Brumby aeroplane what it is.